Now, when it comes to switches, the Atom Mini Pro has kind of been the go-to for every single person doing live streaming. And that is until now. This is the OC Ghost. Now to make this video to the point, because doing a kind of a review on a stream deck like this can be intensely long and it is quite complicated. So I'm gonna to cut to the chase and show you why the OC Go stream for me is a lot better than getting something like the Atom Mini Pro. So in the box, you get the switcher, obviously, a power adapter with a locking thread, and that's pretty much it. And to make this super complex product seem quite simple in a video, I'm gonna take you through the physical side and then through the menu to tie them up. And hopefully that gives you a clearer picture on why this is so amazing. So let's start with the physical side. On the back, you have four HDMI inputs, two HDMI outputs, two mic inputs, a headphone jack out, two USB-C ports, an ethernet port, and the 12 volt DC power port. There's cooling vents on either side, an SD card slot on the front, and on the top, you're presented with an array of buttons. Now, if it's your first time ever looking at a switcher, even if you do this kind of thing, looking at each switcher for the first time is a little bit overwhelming and you kind of don't know what goes where. So to explain this, I'm gonna kind of mark these off into specific areas. And once you've seen how I mark it, it'll make a lot more sense when you look at it for yourself. In actual fact, I don't know why manufacturers don't actually do this because it would just be a little bit simpler. First, you have the power button on the top left. And unlike the Atom, which doesn't have a power button, it just powers on as you plug it in. And if you are worried about accidentally pushing the power button while you're live streaming, you actually have to hold it in for a couple of seconds to be able to turn it off. Next, you have the live stream button, and this is to go live when you are ready to go live. And unlike the Atom, this you can live stream to three different platforms, which is available in the menu, and I'll show you that in a bit. Next, you have your program and preview section. Now this works a lot better than the Atom. If you are used to other switches that just have one set of keys, in the menu, you kind of have to switch to either just an immediate tap is to cut essentially, or you can set it as a preview, but you're only left with one array of keys. This layout gives your bottom row being your preview or your next in line, and the top row being what is essentially live in your program view. But what is pretty cool, if you have someone that is on stage and you are on that specific camera and you have another camera lined up and they accidentally walk off the other side, you could immediately switch just using the top row without having to preview and cut to it. So if you are just tapping the top row, it'll immediately switch to that camera, but you can just line it up in preview using the bottom row, which is pretty cool. Now you do have one, two, three, four, which is essentially HDMI, one, two, three, four. And then you have AUX, which is your SD card, which I'll show you in a bit, or you can switch that in the settings to use one of the USB-C ports as a webcam, basically giving you an option of five cameras. You then have still one and still two, which is available for you, and black, which is super source. And with that, you can put any one of these eight keys in the preview before switching to it, including your AUX, your SD card, and lining up a video that you want to play and switch it into preview. Little tip, super genius of OC. If you've ever lined up a video that you want to go live in your preview because you know it is next in line at your event, as soon as you go live with that video or you cut to that video from preview, you have to quickly push play on that video. With the OC Go stream, when the video is loaded into the SD card and you cut to that video, it automatically starts playing. Next, you have eight macros over here. And this is where once again, the OC Go stream just pulls miles ahead of its competition. Now macros are quite complex and I'm not going to get into it because it is, if you are new to macros, I'm gonna overwhelm you. And if you are aware of macros, you'll kind of know what this does. Basically, if you want to set up a specific setup or a memory as they call it, you can record all of that 
to memory one by just holding in memory one and it will start recording your key presses. So you would need to go in, adjust your key presses, whether you're doing a specific picture in picture, whatever it may be, that is your kind of go to memory. Once you've done that, you can set up memory two, memory three, memory four, and you can just always quick toggle back to that. And by pushing that, it will automatically apply those settings. Next up is the menu button with the jog wheel. And this is amazing. The jog wheel works and you depress the button as well to select and the menu is kind of the back button. But recently we reformatted one of the MacBooks that we use for live streaming and we wiped the entire thing and reloaded everything. And I had a live stream and I needed to connect my ATEM back to it. And reloading all that software, and I don't know if you've tried this, but on the Blackmagic website to try and find it, there's forums about how to find the ATEM control software. And the whole thing just became this absolute nightmare to set it up. And none of that is needed with the OC Go stream. Everything is built into here, into the screen that plugs into one of the HDMIs, the entire menu and workaround. There's no additional software that's needed. You don't even need a computer to work this at all. Now I'll get to the entire menu in a bit. Next is this record section, the one just to the left. This allows you to record the stream or the program view that you are sending out. Now in the menu, you can change the quality of the recording that you do from low, medium to high. But what you can also do in a switch at this price is you can have a different quality setting for the stream that is going out to the live feed and the stream that you record. So if you're in an area with bad network, you can send out a low quality stream, but you can record a high quality backup. And you record that to the SD card, but I prefer the SD card that you can record it to because when you move to the next section, which is the play section, and this is to play media off the SD card, you can record to the SD card and play from the SD card at the exact same time. And that is where the play, stop and skip buttons come in. Basically your aux feed is linked to your play, stop and skip. And just by holding in the play button, it would automatically bring up all the media that you are able to play stored on your SD card. And you can actually just skip between the videos and hit play on them. So you can line that video up in the preview and you can skip through in your preview so you're not live. And when you're ready to play that video, you can just switch that video into live. What is also pretty cool is if you are busy playing a video, you cannot accidentally stop that video or skip that video. So while that video is in your program or your live feed, you cannot play, you cannot stop or skip that video by accident to another video. You can only do that when it is in preview. And that is pretty cool. And like I said just now, if you switch to that media feed, so if you cut to it and it goes into live and you had it in your preview, it automatically starts playing. The audio obviously comes with it too. And that's gonna take me to the audio section on the left. Now the audio on this is pretty insane because you've got your mic one, mic two, input one, input two, all the way to four, which is your HDMI feeds. Then you've got your aux, your program, and then you've got audio follows video and the on button, and this is the dial to adjust the gain of that audio. Now how the aux side works is pretty easy. If you tap mic one, it will show you if that audio is on. Now it probably would be better if OC actually made these light up knowing that they are physically on all the time, it would probably be a better idea. But by switching to mic one or mic two, you can see if it's on or if it's AFV, which is audio follows video. With that said, what you can do is if you are on, let's say input two, which is HDMI two, and you have that one set to AFV, as soon as you switch to camera two, the audio will follow the video that comes live. But the gain dial on here is really what makes this entire little section so worthwhile. Next, you are with the Kia section. You have a key button as well as a downstream key. And then the BKGD button, which I believe is semi preview, but I haven't actually figured that one out yet. Listen, it's tough when you're reviewing a product that doesn't come with a full fledged manual as yet. And not just that, but OC is absolutely amazing at dropping new software updates with new features. I've had this for a while now. And a lot of the features that I'm mentioning haven't been with me since the original time when I got the OC Go stream. And every time I've been wanting to do this, I've been wanting to make a 
better, but there's new features and so much more coming. So it is kind of tough when it's a new product, but the fact that OC is dropping updates constantly is what makes this so ahead of everyone else. Now how this little key and on air button works, key would essentially kind of give you the preview of this and when you hit on air, it would go into on air or into your program or live feed. Now in the menu, you can switch what your key button will do, which is what you would call your key type. So your key type could be linked to picture in picture, your luma key, your chroma key, or your key pattern. So you can choose in your menu quickly while you're live even what you want that button to do. Now these over here are your transition buttons. And this is amazing. You have the basic cut button, which does that hard cut. You have a fade to black, which fades the video to black. But in the menu, what you can do with OC is you can set your fade to black to also fade the audio. So if you're like me and for the last couple of years have been live streaming with something like the Atom Mini Pro and I would fade to black, I would also bring my audio down as well. I have a separate mixer that I use that's plugged into mic one and I would drop that. Now you could just hit fade to black and it all just goes away, which is fantastic. One less thing to worry about when you're live is a bonus. Your auto does the auto fade and the T-bar over here is pretty obvious. That will basically fade to whichever one you have selected and you could do it manually. But here is where things start getting a little bit different. You have a dip button which will dip the video into a black screen or a white screen or a picture or whatever you want. And in the menu, you have full customization of this in loading your own PNG, or you can do a wipe or a mix, which is just kind of blending the two, like a dissolve. But in the wipe, you have so many different types of fades as well. And then you have the preview button. If you activate this preview button and it's red, it will show you in your preview, the current screen that is live and when you hit, the auto or cut button, it will show you what fade or transition you have selected and you could preview it before you start using it even when you're live. So it's kind of learning your go stream even when you're live is possible rather than just kind of sitting there and knowing that once you're live, you cannot make any decisions on the fly. Now on the USB-C port, one of them would essentially operate as an output to a laptop and the other is for a webcam or something like the OBSPOT that I've used over here. Just bearing in mind that this is also NDI. Once you have an NDI license, you can load it in and you can operate NDI if you do use NDI. And that is pretty much everything here. Now the SD card in the front, OC does have recommended speeds of SD cards on their website as well. I have a nice 512 gigabyte SD card that I actually now use in my GoStream. The menu. Now when it comes to the menu of this, this is where I absolutely love the OC GoStream and going back to the HDMI ports on the back is what really is amazing. So to make all of this understandable and why this is so great, you have four HDMI ins, which is your cameras. You have two HDMI outs, which can be adjusted to your multi-view, or one can be your multi-view and one could be your program view, which is essentially what is live, a clean feed. Now what's great with that is you can have two monitors there for yourself and you can kind of see what you are doing and you won't make that mistake because your other monitor shows exactly what is live. But at the same time, if you are busy at a venue, and your client is asking for a feed of what you are live streaming or recording to be put onto their projector that they can switch to, you can now offer them that service. Unfortunately, with something like the Atom Mini Pro, you can't. And once you activate the menu, that is where you see it in your multi-view. Part of the screen becomes part of the menu and this is where you have access to everything. So the software is integrated completely, unlike the Atom and other switches. Now starting at the top of the menu, the super source allows you full customization and is activated by the black button, which two inputs should be displayed, the mask on those inputs, the border, you can even have your background as one of the HDMI ins. The customization on everything, as you can see, is immense. Now your key type is the choice for which key type you want activated. As mentioned, you have Luma key, a chroma key, picture in picture, or key pattern. And that assigns one of those four different settings to be activated by this key button. Now picture in picture finally gives everyone what they've been wanting. You have full picture in picture customization from size to shape, positioning, masking, borders, 
and the fact that you can do this on the fly so easily is fantastic. Then you have the Luma key, which can be activated, which is exactly that. It's a Luma key that allows you to work with different colors. It's very similar to a chroma key, but works on Luma. And then you have the chroma key, which is mostly used for green screen, which I'm not gonna show you because I haven't set up a green screen for this. But if you are someone that uses live streaming with green screen, you can, and you can even cherry pick the exact color of your background. Your key pattern gives you a ton of customization for your key type. Now this allows you to do a lot more in terms of somewhat picture in picture and add different shapes around it. The amount of customization that you're given at a price point of $295 is probably more than a $295 user is going to be using. But that allows you to have a great offering to your client. Your DSK is your downstream key and just like macros, if you have used a mixer before, you understand what downstream key is, so I'm not gonna get into it, but the customization is exactly like everything else that you've seen so far. In the audio side, you have full customization of your mics and your inputs. Like I said previously, I always used an audio mixer. It's just very nice to have physical buttons, and it's one thing that I've really enjoyed. Also, on that note too, the customization that you had on the Atom in the audio isn't really great. Here the audio mixer gives you audio access from faders, balances, input, delays, all on mic one and two, and on all four HDMI inputs, you get fader, balance, and input adjustments, and even your aux input. You can even change your monitor audio to listen to one specific mic if you are wanting to test audio, even while you're live. Pretty cool. Now on the still generator, which is the activation of buttons still one and still two, you have an images folder on the SD card. And whatever images you load there, you can access. But just remember you have to use PNG even if you're not using a clear background. The GoStream does read it as a PNG and not a JPEG. But you do have the option to upload 31 different stills. And then on the fly select if still one or still two needs to activate which of those 31 images. Now for macros, you have the ability to import macros if you want or if you want to add a delay. And then the stream section is that part that really sets the go stream miles ahead of everyone else. You can go in and pick which three platforms you want the video to go out to. If you have three pre-selected streams that you usually use, perhaps Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube, you could just toggle two of them off so that when you go live now it will only go to the one platform. Now on the playback note, which is the aux if it's activated to the SD card, you can choose when you play a video if a video must play once, if it must play on a loop, or if it should be sequential. In other words, just play through all the videos that you have. Now, if you've ever used an Atom before and a client has come to you and said, can we put this on a loop at a specific time, you will know how difficult it is to put something on a loop. And then you have the settings side of it. And this is mind blowing. One of the worst things that you can do is if you're asking someone to sit by your live stream desk and maybe switch one or two camera angles, or if you've been live streaming for a very long live stream session, it's very easy to get confused which is preview and which is program. Now the GoStream does allow you to switch the two different screens, program and preview on left or right. But what they also do is allow you to completely change the names. So HDMI one can actually say close up camera or camera one, you can change your program feed, which I have done to the word live. So if someone is sitting with me and I've asked them to just take over for me quick while I go and move a camera, they know which is the live screen. Then you have markers that you can activate that don't actually go out to the feed, but they're good for you to be able to see the marker in terms of framing. Your mic inputs can do mic, line, and even mic plus power, which is great for phantom power. And obviously you can customize your own record file, so whatever the record file name should be. Then as mentioned, the aux button can be changed from SD card to the USB camera or PTZ camera, or even an NDI camera. So it's a four camera switcher that can be made a five channel switcher. And to show you why this is so important, I can have four cameras on here 
in HDMI, I can have my PTZ camera in here essentially giving me five cameras. Then I can switch off my PTZ camera if it's getting to a point of a live stream and just switch it to the SD card and play off that. So I've basically got five cameras plus the media that can be played. On my Atom, unfortunately, when I've got four HDMI ins, I'd run three cameras and one HDMI would be my iPad. So you can quickly see how much more versatility this adds as opposed to the limitations from something like the Atom Mini Pro. Then you can change your output obviously, but OC once again with their latest updates, and this is fresh update, have now added all the frame rates you could possibly want. 24, 25, 30, and 60, plus 23,98, 29,97, and 59,94. Really? Also on that HDMI out one and two, you can change those completely. You can even change out two to be your aux if you wanted to play media, perhaps on a feed on a bigger screen. Yet you could still switch it to live over here. So if you were supplying a slideshow to a client on their screen, you can do that and give them the feed, but you can also put that live on your stream. And as mentioned before, you can adjust the quality settings of your stream or your recording. And then you have something that is pretty epic, which is the brightness of the buttons. Now I know that may seem like nothing, but if you've ever live streamed in a very dark environment, the buttons are insanely bright. They kind of just pierce your eyeballs. When you go to bed that night, you can still see HDMI one, two, three, four. The fact that you can drop this and push the brightness up all the way to 15 in daylight is great. And that is why the OC Go Stream is so far ahead of everyone else. Now I know I have compared this to the Atom Mini Pro and I am by no means bashing the Atom Mini Pro. Atom Mini Pro was made some time back and I do know the Atom has got their bigger extremes, but we are looking at prices here and we're trying to compare apples to apples. And I am someone that uses the Atom Mini Pro and it's a reliable device. But when a company like OC that has always put out great products like their Little Mon 5, their T7 monitor and G7 monitor, and they come into the market and they offer something that is so well thought out, you have to give them credit. They've created a product and listened to their users and have provided update after update. And the users online, they have a Facebook group. I'll put the link in the description below. You can go and join that Facebook group and see how the people are raving about this and how they are using them in everyday projects. OC constantly updates there on their latest updates and they listen to the users that are commenting and giving them feedback about new features and changes. And that is why something like this is gonna pave the way forward and any other brand that is gonna to wanna to make a switcher is actually gonna to have to compare themselves to OC now. These are the guys that have made something that is the leader in their market. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know there's a lot going on in this video and there's so much more to this product, but I wanted to keep it a little bit more understandable, digestible, and easy for you as a viewer. This wraps up the review of the OC Go Stream Deck. I will drop a link in the description below where you can check out more or pick one up. Thanks for watching, wherever you are in the world. Have a good day, good evening, good night. Goodbye.